Okay, the last case here for interest, there's a special case if, so, so far what we talked about is issuing bond in the beginning of the year, paying interest in the middle, and at the end of the year. Now sometimes companies may be, uh, may be borrowing money in the middle of the year. So when this happens, when it reaches the end of the year, oftentimes again, companies will be issuing financial statements, so they have to update the account. So earlier, all three cases, we assumed that the issuance starts January 1st, interest is paid off either July 1st or June 30th, and then the second half of the interest paid December 31st. So there wasn't any cases of adjustments to, made, to be made. So this is an example if the issuance doesn't happen just on January 1st, just on whatever date that is in the middle of the year, and when it reaches the end of the year, we basically, we don't have to pay money to creditors yet, to bondholders yet, because it hasn't reached half a year. But we still have to journalize an adjusting entry to recognize the interest at year end. Okay, so this is very much, very similar to short-term notes, long-term notes, when it reaches year end, if it's not the due date, if we're not obligated to pay money yet, we have to just adjust the interest expense, interest payable entry. This part is exactly the same as that. Okay, so he's assuming that the first entry here, assuming we issued a bond October 1st, and what happens in this first entry is when it reaches December 31st, we want to recognize interest expense for just three months. Because we issued it October, so we have a whole October, November, December. But remember, we only pay interest to bondholders every half a year. So if we issue the bond October 1st, we're not paying the half a year interest until the following year, March 31st. But when it reaches this year end, we have to accrue the entry that has accumulated, been accumulated on the bond because we want to issue financial statements. So we want to update the accounts. Okay, so this journal entry is what we're trying to do here, accumulating interest on the bond that was issued in the middle of the year, not in the beginning. So here you see that interest expense, interest payable, discount on bonds payable, you don't see cash here because we're not paying cash yet. We're paying in next year when it reaches half a year later. So we have interest payable here calculated by the face value, still $100,000, times the interest rate, 8%, and then for three months only. Okay, so this is the interest that we owe to bondholders, but since it's not the pay date yet, it's just considered payable not cash. You know, always at the time when we adjust any part of the interest, we also take care of discount on bonds payable. So this case here, we only amortize discount on bonds payable for three months, for $50 only. So earlier the cases, we're just assuming that we're paying off the interest at year end and it coincidentally is just the time point um, for financial statements and the time point for the pay date for the bonds. So at that time we would just be, we will just credit cash, credit discount on bonds payable for six months. This is a case that we only accrue interest for three months and it's not the pay date yet so it's considered payable, interest payable for three months. So what's the thing about payable? What happens to payable later on when we want to pay it? The reason why it's called payable is because it's a liability and later on we need to pay it off by cash, right? So this part interest payable, the three months here, will be paid off when it comes to the pay date for bonds interest, which is another three months later because we only pay interest every half a year. So when it reaches March 31st, that interest payable $2,000 will be reduced and we're also paying an additional three months of interest for January, February, and March. All together, six months of interest we're paying on the pay date, March 31st. Okay, we're basically just reversing that interest payable. We're reducing it because now when it comes to the pay date, we're actually paying it by cash, six months. And then since we consider three months of discount on bonds payable last year end, we only have an additional three months of discount on bonds payable to consider here.
Any questions? Now, if I change this problem to the issuance date is November 1st, what part would change here? Or how will we calculate the dollar amount for interest payable or discounts? We'll be switching the months to, for the first entry, which part will we change? It will still be face value $100,000, still be interest rate 8%, but only for two months because we only have November, whole November and December. Okay, so we're doing two months of interest accumulation. We still have interest payable account, interest expense, discount on bonds payable, but interest payable will be $100,000 times 8% interest rate times 2 over 12. And we're also changing discount on bonds payable. Okay, discount on bonds payable here, you see the discount $2,000. We spread it along 10 years, that's the same. We're only accounting for two months over 12 again. So what about the following year? What happens here? Would it still be March 31st? It would be April 30th, right? If we push back a month, April 30th, the account is still the same, interest payable, but this part would only be for November, December. This part, the purple box, the second one, will be for January, February, March, and April for four months. Okay, so cash part is the same. We're paying cash for six months. Discount on bonds payable, this part will change to four. Because we're accounting for this next year, 2014, it'll be four months, January, all the way to the end of April. Okay, I'm just saying that if I change the issuance date to November 1st, for this year, there will only be two months to account for, to accumulate interest on. Then for the following year, there will be four months before we actually pay the interest date. So the interest date will be paid, interest will be paid on April 30th. Okay, so just keep in mind the reason why we're doing this is because the cutoff point oftentimes at year end, companies do financial statements. We want to accumulate and make sure each and every account is being brought up to date. So that's what we're doing in the first entry. Second, we're reducing interest payable since we're paying cash interest for six months altogether. Okay, let's